But I happen to believe that verse 21 records the first innocent, uh, the first example of death in the created universe. I believe that verse 21 records the first shedding of blood on the earth. Where did God get the skins to cover our first parents? He got it by killing the animals. He got it by shedding the blood of animals. But you notice two things have happened here as a result of the fall, as a result of the curse. In verse 18, there's going to be thorns which come out of the ground. And in verse 21, there has to be a covering, an atonement. Obviously, this is a temporary atonement, which foreshadows a permanent atonement brought by the shedding not of animal blood, but by human blood. And not merely human blood, but divine blood, the blood of the God-man, the Son of God, who's also the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the two things I want you to notice are the thorns which come out of the ground and the clothes which God has to make for our first parents through the shedding of blood of the animals, okay? Hold your place in Genesis 3. Turn to John chapter 19. John 19. This is John's account of the cross. Now, you're all familiar with this, but I want to show you the connection. Maybe you're familiar with the connection. It says in John 19.2 that the soldiers made a crown of thorns and put it on Jesus' head. So the thorns were put on his head. What is he taking? Did everybody hear what Igor said? He's taking the curse. He's taking the curse on his head. Now look at verse 23. John 19, 23. The soldiers, when they crucified Jesus, took his, his clothes. He had one piece of clothing which was seamless, woven in one piece. And they said, let's don't tear it up because it's too valuable. So they gambled for it. What are they taking? What did they give to him? They gave him the curse. They put the thorns on his head. What are they taking from him? The clothes. Okay, say it a little bit more theologically. They're taking his clothes. They're taking... They're taking the covering. They're taking the atonement. Do they know what they're doing? Of course not. Of course not. But is it, it is, is it a part of God's message to us about what is happening? Of course it is. Does Christ know what's happening? Of course He does. Of course He does. You see what's being played out in the drama of our redemption. Christ takes the curse for us. Christ gives the covering to us. The thorns are put on His head so that the clothes can be put on our back. The first Adam was given roses without thorns. The second Adam was given thorns without roses. You see what Christ has done for us. In the Old Testament, the Lord presents Himself to us primarily as a Creator. 
In the New Testament, the Lord presents Himself to us primarily as a Redeemer. Now, there's plenty of redemption in the Old Testament. And there's plenty of creation in the New Testament. But God wants us to know Him as the Creator. And God wants us to know Him as the Redeemer. And if you'll just receive a spiritual lesson right now, just let me tell you that many, many, many times in our lives, we're going to be in a situation that we see no good solution, no good way out of this, no possibility of relief or a happy ending. That's where God comes in. Because God can create things that we can never imagine. And God can redeem things with resources that we don't have for redemption in ways that we don't think it can be redeemed. It's a lost situation. But God has come to minister to our lostness. Christ has been sent to be our Redeemer. Now, I can't resist one little final comment about the people who say that there is no God or the people who say that there is no redemption and no life after death. Here's what those people are asking us to believe. Think about it. You see, the important thing, we've all been brainwashed. We've all been brainwashed in our education systems. And we've all been brainwashed to leave God out and to leave the biblical point of view out. And our goal and our task as Christian students so that we can become Christian educators and teachers is to think biblically. Not to think like the serpent tempts us to think, but to think according to the Word of God. And our faith is a reasonable faith. The faith of the atheist is an unreasonable faith. Our faith is faith, but the, the atheist also has faith. And the question is, which faith is more reasonable? Here's what the atheist expects us to believe. The atheist expects us to believe that there was a time when there was nothing. And everything that we see just happened on its own, accidentally. C.S. Lewis said this, if there was ever a time when there was absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing, meaning no God, there would still be absolutely nothing. Now, that is so simple that you have to be a fool not to believe that. And they also ask us to believe that there will be a future time when there will be nothing because the sun will flame out and all the fuel of the stars will die down and the universe will collapse. The fact that we believe that there is a heaven and a hell is not hard to believe when we see everything that exists in this life. When we see everything that God has already done, it's very reasonable to believe God's promise that He also is going to do something else, that there will be another world and another universe and another life. It's much more reasonable to think that if we have all the forms of life that we have, that there can also be other life. That's much more reasonable to believe that we began as nothing and that we are going to nothing. So we're leaving now the story of the creation and the story of the fall. We've been told about the story of sin and the consequences of sin. And what the consequences of sin mean is not only our death and the death of our children, but the death of God's Son, that we might have a life which never dies. That's the story of redemption in the story of creation in the book of Genesis.
in chapter Even three. a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.